but we're still getting that nice 7K sensor. Downsample into a 4K box, so we're getting crispier, juicier, sharper details, even in 4K 60p, 10-bit 422. And let's freaking go! The 4K 60p no longer forces us into an APS-C crop. Freaking finally! It had never made sense to me why the A7 Mark IV, a full-frame camera, cannot shoot 4K 60p in full-frame mode. I've ranted about this before, so... I am glad they rectified that in the A7 Mark V. However, that APS-C crop penalty got moved to 4K 120p. Now, I can only speak for myself. I think the APS-C crop for 4K 120 frames per second is... fine. Bear in mind, any other camera that can do 4K 120 frames per second has a slight crop anyway, usually 1.2 times. But the A7 Mark V is a 1.5 times crop for 4K 120. Now, I don't really shoot 4K 120. In my opinion, the slow motion is too slow in 120 frames per second, so it's not a big deal this time around that the 4K 120 frames per second has a APS-C crop. But for those who do need 4K 120 frames per second, this might be a slight disappointment to you. Now, I don't quite understand yet why we have this new option, 4K angle of view priority. It says, sets whether or not to widen the angle of view for recording by disabling a part of noise reduction processing when shooting 4K videos. So when on, I'm guessing we're getting the full 4K view and when off, we're cropped in. Not an APS-C level crop, but some type of crop. And when it's off and cropped, the camera is doing some kind of noise reduction. So to test this out, I just cranked the ISO to 51,200 and filmed in the dark. When 4K angle of view priority is on, we do see a lot of dancing noise. Turning it off, the noise dots are not as sharp anymore. It's all smoothed out. Even the buildings here are looking softer. And I don't know about you, but I prefer the no noise reduction shot. Trying this out in the daytime with Mount Fuji, I really can't tell the difference when it's on or off besides the crop. So for now, I would rather just get an uncropped 4K image by leaving this feature on. I don't know, perhaps Jero Undone will have the answer for us. Don't do that. Aside from that, we're getting LUT preview when we're filming an S-Log3. Nice. Seven and a half stop of in-body image stabilization. Double nice. Dynamic active stabilization. Triple nice. Now, even though dynamic active stabilization crops in tighter in exchange for a more stabilized footage, with the 7K sensor, we don't have to worry about a huge quality loss like we would see from cameras like the ZV-E1, which only has a 12 megapixel 4K sensor. And like the ZV-E1, this also has AI-based auto reframing in which it'll do a slow zoom in and out at a predetermined interval, which add a bit of production value for solo creators. It is baked into the footage. However, if you have an external recorder, like an Atomos Ninja, then the Atomos Ninja can record the whole frame while the camera will record the reframe into your internal memory. That way, you have both footage. Now, personally, we don't use this, but hey, it's there. And rolling shutter in full frame video has been largely reduced. Okay, rolling shutter test. According to Sony, from 25 milliseconds to less than 10 milliseconds. Boy, it really makes you wonder why Sony didn't just wait for this camera to come out first before releasing the FX2. I mean, can you imagine the FX2 with these video specs? It would have slapped. But is there overheating? Of course, unlike the FX2, the A7 Mark V does not have a built-in fan, like all the other Alpha models. And like the latest Alpha models, it does have a unique Sony Sigma-shaped graphite heatsink built in for better heat dissipation. Go ahead, ask your kid what Sigma means. Don't be too late or all the cute Sigma boys will be taken. But um, overheating, your use case will vary depending on the climate and condition that you're shooting in, but in our test... The A7 Mark V never overheated nor showed a heat warning sign. Both 4K24 and 4K60 10-bit 422SI filled two 128GB cards with some battery left over. With 4K24 10-bit 422HS, it lasted 2 hours and 53 minutes. 4K60P 10-bit 422 HS lasted 1 hour 54 minutes, both juicing out the battery but never overheated. And with 4K120 10-bit 422HS, it filled both 128GB cards in an hour and 46 minutes with 6% battery left. Again, your conditions will vary, but these are impressive results. Audio. So I'm talking next to a coffee grinder right now, and as far as I know, this is the first time that Sony's introducing a noise reference microphone, which does the noise reduction in camera for you. So let me just enable that for you so you can hear the difference. 
Now, to be clear, this is not the same visual noise that we were talking about earlier. This is sound noise. That's right, Jason. And it works whether you're using the onboard microphone, yuck, or external microphones.